Bowel obstruction is a serious and potentially life-threatening condition that affects the digestive system. It occurs when there's a blockage in either the small or large intestine, preventing the normal passage of food, fluids, and waste products through the digestive tract. In a normal digestive system, the intestines contract rhythmically to push food, fluids, and gas through the digestive tract. However, when an obstruction occurs, this movement can be stopped, leading to a buildup of food, fluids, and gas behind the blockage. This buildup causes the affected area of the intestine to swell, and if left untreated, it can lead to serious complications such as infection, tissue death, or even a life-threatening condition known as sepsis or blood poisoning. The severity of bowel obstruction varies depending on whether the blockage is partial or complete. In a partial obstruction, some materials like fluids can still pass through the intestines, but it may cause discomfort, pain, and a sense of fullness. In a complete obstruction, nothing can pass through, leading to more severe symptoms and requiring immediate medical intervention. Bowel obstruction is a relatively common condition. In the United States, for example, it accounts for about 15% of all emergency department visits for acute abdominal pain. Annually, there are approximately 350,000 hospitalizations for intestinal obstruction in the U.S. alone. Types of Bowel Obstruction Bowel obstructions are broadly classified into two main categories, small bowel obstruction and large bowel obstruction. Number 1. Small Bowel Obstruction This type of obstruction occurs in the small intestine which is the part of the digestive system responsible for absorbing nutrients from food. Small bowel obstructions are more common than large bowel obstructions, accounting for about 80% of all obstructions. Number two, large bowel obstruction. Large bowel obstruction occurs in the large intestine, also known as the colon, which is responsible for absorbing water and forming stool. Obstructions in the large bowel are less common, but can be more serious, because the large intestine plays a key role in eliminating waste from the body. Causes of Bowel Obstruction The causes of bowel obstruction are diverse and depend on the type and location of the obstruction. One of the most common causes of obstruction is adhesions, which are bands of scar tissue that form after surgery. These adhesions can pull or twist the intestine, creating a physical barrier, which prevents the normal movement of food and waste through the intestines. Adhesions are particularly common after abdominal surgeries, and they can develop weeks, months, or even years after the initial procedure. Hernias are another significant cause. This is where a portion of the intestine pushes through a weak spot in the abdominal wall, potentially becoming trapped and obstructed. Tumors in the intestine can also cause a physical obstruction by growing large enough to block the passage of food and fluids. These can be benign, which means non-cancerous, or malignant, which means cancerous, and they are more common in the large intestine, where they can grow undetected for some time before causing symptoms. Volvulus is another potential cause of obstructions, where the intestine twists on itself, cutting off its own blood supply. This is more common in the large intestine, particularly in the sigmoid colon. Other than these causes, diverticulitis, which is an inflammation or infection of small pouches in the colon wall, can also lead to an obstruction if these pouches become swollen or filled with pus. Intussusception is another cause, particularly in children, where one segment of the intestine telescopes into another, leading to a blockage. This condition is less common in adults but can still occur, often associated with a tumor or other abnormal growths. In addition to these mechanical causes, there is a type of obstruction called pseudo-obstruction. In this case, the symptoms of bowel obstruction are present, but there's no actual physical blockage in the intestine. Instead, the problem lies with the functioning of the muscles or nerves of your intestines. So, the intestine fails to push its contents along properly, leading to symptoms that mimic a true obstruction. Causes of this type include infections such as gastroenteritis, which can lead to temporary paralysis of the intestines, resulting in symptoms similar to a bowel obstruction. Medications that slow down the movement of the intestines, such as narcotics or certain antidepressants, can also lead to a pseudo-obstruction. Neurological conditions, such as Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis, can also affect the nerves controlling the intestines, leading to impaired motility and symptoms of obstruction.
In some cases, bowel obstructions can be caused by less common causes, such as foreign objects that have been swallowed or gallstones that have entered the intestine. Symptoms of bowel obstruction The symptoms of bowel obstruction can vary depending on the location and severity of the blockage. Abdominal pain is often the first and most noticeable symptom. The pain is usually crampy and intermittent, reflecting the intestine's attempts to push material through the blockage. As the condition progresses, the pain may become constant and more severe, particularly in cases of complete obstruction. Bloating also occurs as gas and fluids build up in the intestine behind the blockage, leading to a distended abdomen. Nausea and vomiting are also common as the body attempts to expel the contents of the stomach and intestine that cannot pass through the blockage. In cases of complete obstruction, vomiting may even include material that has backed up from the intestine, giving it a fecal-like odor. In cases of obstruction high in the small intestine, vomiting may occur soon after eating. If the obstruction is lowered down, vomiting might be delayed or less frequent. Another key symptom of bowel obstruction is the inability to pass gas or have a bowel movement. In complete obstruction, this symptom is usually present from the onset, as nothing can pass through the blockage. In partial obstruction, patients may still be able to pass small amounts of stool or gas, but these become less frequent as the obstruction worsens. Some patients might experience paradoxical diarrhea, where only liquid stool from above the obstruction manages to seep around the blockage. In some cases, patients might be able to hear increased bowel sounds or see visible peristalsis, which are wave-like movements of the intestines trying to push contents past the obstruction. As the condition progresses, more severe symptoms can develop. These might include fever, rapid heart rate, and signs of dehydration like decreased urine output and dry mouth. Diagnosis of Bowel Obstruction When a patient has symptoms suggestive of bowel obstruction, the doctor will begin with a thorough medical history and physical examination. During the physical exam, the doctor may be able to feel a distended abdomen and may hear abnormal bowel sounds when listening with a stethoscope. In cases of complete obstruction, bowel sounds may be absent, indicating that the intestine has stopped moving. Imaging studies play a key role in confirming the diagnosis and identifying the location and cause of the obstruction. An abdominal x-ray is often the first imaging test performed. It can show dilated loops of intestine and air fluid levels, which are characteristic signs of obstruction. However, x-rays aren't always definitive, especially in cases of partial obstruction. A CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis is usually the most informative imaging study. It can provide detailed images of the intestines, showing not only the presence of an obstruction, but often its cause as well. CT scans can identify things like tumors, hernias, or twists in the intestine that might be causing the blockage. In some cases, particularly when a tumor is suspected, a contrast study might be performed. This involves the patient drinking a special contrast solution or having it administered through a nasogastric tube. Then, x-rays or CT scans are then taken to track the progress of the contrast through the digestive system, which can help pinpoint the location of an obstruction. Treatment for bowel obstruction Treatment for bowel obstruction depends on the type, location, and severity of the obstruction, as well as the underlying cause. In cases of partial obstruction, conservative treatment may be sufficient to relieve the blockage and allow the intestine to return to normal function. This typically includes bowel rest, which means the patient is not allowed to eat or drink anything by mouth. Instead, they're given intravenous fluids to prevent dehydration, as well as medications to relieve pain and nausea. The conservative treatment may also include nasogastric decompression, where a tube is inserted through the nose and into the stomach to remove gas and fluids that have built up behind the obstruction. This can help relieve pressure in the intestine and reduce symptoms such as pain and vomiting. For complete obstructions or obstructions caused by conditions that are unlikely to resolve on their own, surgery is often necessary. The specific type of surgery depends on the cause of the obstruction. For example, if adhesions are the cause, the surgery might involve cutting through the adhesions to free the intestine. If a hernia is causing the obstruction, the surgeon will repair the hernia. 
Tumors causing obstruction may require partial removal of the affected intestine and sometimes additional treatments such as chemotherapy or radiation therapy. In the case of a pseudo-obstruction, treatment may involve stopping any medications that may be contributing to the problem, treating infections or other conditions that may be affecting the intestines, and sometimes using medications that stimulate the movement of the intestines. After surgery or other treatments, patients will need to be closely monitored for signs of complications, such as infection, bleeding, or recurrence of the obstruction. Most patients can expect to spend several days in the hospital and several weeks recovering at home. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have bowel obstruction? What was the cause of it? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.